Hello, Don. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Today's guest is Don Harmer, and I created this podcast with the intention to show people all the diverse creative careers an artist can take part in. And after having more than 30 shows under my belt, I couldn't believe we haven't spotlighted a photographer. So I'm excited to spotlight today's guest, Don Harmer, an artist and photographer. And Don has the valuable experience in various fields of photography, including editorial, portrait, fine art, and can't wait to hear her creative journey. And before we start, Don, where can people see your work? Yes. So probably the number one place that you can find me is on Instagram, which is Dawn underscore Harmer underscore PW, as in PhotoWorks. So Dawn Harmer PhotoWorks. And then, of course, also I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn. And then I've got my own website, DawnHarmer.com. And that's it. So, I mean, if you type in my name, for the most part, I should come up uh, under all of those. Although there is another Dawn Harmer who is a photographer, (laughs) which is why I went for the underscore PW so that I uh, differentiate myself. So, so yeah, that's it. Fantastic. And listeners, please connect with Dawn. And I appreciate if you hit the subscribe and like button for our show. So, Dawn... There are so many passionate photographers in the world. Please tell us what is your creative background and how you found your love for photography. All right. And again, thank you so much for having me. It's really quite an honor to be on your show. (laughs) Thank you. Very flattered. So beginnings, I would have to say it started at a very young age. My dad was a hobbyist, so he had a camera and he had set up a dark room in our dark creepy basement i always like to say that because it was one of those basements that you might see in a horror movie (laughs) where as you're you're walking down the wooden slats that are open you know somebody might be under the stairs they would stick their arm through kind of grabbing at you (laughs) so i was like a a four-year-old child and i would sneak down there while my father was developing film and anybody who's told you a story like that it really is magic When you take a blank piece of paper and you run it through chemistry from the developer to the stop bath to the fixer and you see this magic unfold as the the image appears, it was just phenomenal. I fell in love at an early age and then over the years, both of my parents sort of documented us as a family with cameras And uh, probably at the age of 12, I got my first camera and just kept shooting just for fun. I just really, I loved it as an art form. And then from there, um, I had, as a young adult, I didn't pursue photography as a profession, but I had sort of a a life change and I was reassessing, well, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? So I um, sort of, it was actually my dad who said, well, go for what you love to do. And I was actually puzzled. Like, I didn't know, what are you talking about, dad? And he said, uh, well, you like to take photographs. I'm like, oh, I really didn't think of that as a career. Okay. And so I started researching. And before I knew it, I was applying to schools. And I was accepted to a program in Toronto, Canada. I lived in Niagara Falls at the time. And uh, off I went. It was a two-year program. But at that time, it was analog. So it was all film-based. So one of the things that the instructors warned us early on was that the industry was on the cusp of a huge change and that digital was at the forefront. So everything that we learned, we may have to re-educate ourselves within five years, which was pretty exact. Because five years later, after graduating, I bought my first digital camera. (laughs) And funny enough, it was a Canon EOS 10D. It shot six meg. (laughs) (laughs) Each image was only six meg file. It wasn't long after owning that camera that I would cross paths with people and they would tell me how their phones could shoot six megs. (laughs) So, of course, that camera didn't last too many years. There was always a need to constantly upgrade it. So that's sort of a a quick overview of my beginnings. Uh, What else can I share? Well, let me jump in there because I'm really 
curious of what you said. Your father was a great influencer for you to go and pursue your passion. And you mentioned you had a dark room. And was your father a professional photographer or was that a hobby of his? It was a hobby. Yeah, he never really pursued it. But I think in those days, it was more economical to, if you had space, and we did, like I said, the creepy basement, it was more economical to develop your own film and your own prints than it was to bring it to a lab. So I think for him, it was just a cost-effective choice to to print out family photos over the years. And I mentioned in the introduction, you have experience in editorial, portrait, fine art photography, and I know there are many others like event photography, but can you give us an overview of the various fields of photography you were a part of and maybe what is your favorite type out of all of those? Okay. Well, the program that I took, it sort of, it touched on everything. So we learned about portrait work and weddings and special events, editorial, industrial, I'm sure there's a few others that I haven't even thought of. <laughs> so when I graduated, I just assumed that I wanted to be a portrait photographer. So that's what I pursued. I talked family and friends into posing for me. I would apply to studios trying to get work. And eventually I did. I was successful at finding a position at Gilbert Studios in Toronto, Canada. And it was uh, quite an iconic place. The photographer he had been around very many years. So he took me on. I worked as a office manager there. And then I did documentary style photography around weddings and special events. And then took care of pretty much everything else around the, the studio itself. So that was a sort of a, a wonderful internship, I guess. And then from there... I moved off and I worked on my own independently, just doing freelance work. And during that time, I also dabbled in some editorial early on, taking gigs with small magazine, newspapers, that kind of thing. And then uh, jumping way ahead into the future, just a couple of years ago, I worked at Slack National Accelerator Laboratories in California. Definitely. Oh my gosh, what an honor it was to work there. So for them, my photography was to help tell stories for the researchers and scientists at that lab. So that was very specifically editorial. That was a really exciting time. And then throughout all of my years, I've always experimented with personal projects too. So that was kind of where the art fit in. It was only through personal work. And then uh, kind of bouncing back and forth while I was working at the studio, I think that's where it was, I was creating sort of a personal body of work that I would just show with to family and friends. And it was my husband that talked me into taking that work and presenting it to some galleries. And lo and behold... I was accepted at one of the galleries and they represented me. And when I sold my first piece, I was hooked. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. What an honor. Now, the way galleries worked back then, at least, I never actually met the people that bought my work. I was just sort of informed that somebody bought it. And I might have got a little quick blurb about who they were, you know, they're an executive and they live downtown and they loved your work and they can't wait to put it on their wall, but they would never reveal their name. So that was kind of sad. I wish that I could have met them or introduced myself or, but I guess that was just their policy. Wow. So that was interesting. Yeah. Don, and let me, then, let me, can I jump in there real quick? Cause you, you mentioned something there that I'm really interested in and I don't know why I did, out of all the questions I have here in front of me, I did not think about that experience with a gallery, because when you're an artist and you're selling your work, many times it's one of one, meaning there's only one of those things that's sold and there's not a duplicate, right? Unless there's prints. Now in photography, maybe educate us listeners, when you're putting your work up and your photos up in the walls, that buyer, are they buying that one photo and there's no more replicas or are you doing a numbered series of those? 
think in my experience, the galleries wanted limited numbered editions. This particular body of work, they weren't merely photographic prints, but rather I had used a process. So I would take a large, most of them were 24 by 36 inch measured, and I would mount them myself on a wood panel. And then I would put a resin epoxy over top of it. So it became one of a kind. It is photography, but it's art photography because you personally, you with your own hands, made it unique. And it's an art piece. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So that series was was a little bit unique. And that was actually a challenge for me because I wasn't easily categorized. So there are fine art photographers who offer archival prints that are matted and framed and they're absolutely beautiful and then they offer them at a one of a hundred or one of a thousand and they would sell those through galleries whereas these they weren't paintings they weren't photographs i mean they they are photographs but they're manipulated so yeah that was interesting so it was really exciting that i could actually take that and sell it so when you graduated college and when you're in photography school, they give you a taste of all different types of photography styles because when you graduate, they don't know what particular you're going to land on. So from your story, you're telling me you worked at Slack, but you also, as an artist, you always had your own personal projects on the side? Yes. Okay. Which will lead me to this question. You currently have these series of underwater artistic photography. And the photos are of your subjects literally underwater. And the photos feel visually calming and angelic. And listeners, please check out Dawn's Instagram page because you have to see the series of the photos she's doing. It's, it's fantastic. And how did you come up with this concept? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely a loaded question. So the current body of work that you're referring to, I have called it the Space Between series. It's sort of looking at identity in the space between reality and perception. But at the same time, I have to admit that it's something that evolved. So it wasn't like I I think if you go to art school, you have to create a proposal and present that, your concept, and then you go and make the work. In this case, I did a little experimenting and I found, wow, I've really got something to work with here. I want to explore it further. And then as I began looking at the images, I'm like, this is quite fascinating. It marries well with the concept of of identity and and this being caught or even lost in the space between. So that's how it evolved. And it was kind of fun the way I first created it. So I started out with a series of tests. I knew that I wanted to take images in a pool, but I don't know a lot of people here because I've only been in north of Austin, Texas for two years. And as we all know, life has not been normal for over a year. So I didn't have access to models. So I decided, all right, well, I'm going to give this a try and I'm going to use myself as the model, which definitely had a complication. Th- that's um, you in those photos? All these images are me, yes. I did not know that. Wow. <laughs> so, sort of a, an added interest to the mix. Yeah. Amazing. So thank you. <laughs> I do. I love that. That's a surprise. So jumping back, if I, I had my discovery, I decided I was going to photograph in the pool. So I decided I would start with a GoPro because I, had one that's waterproof and I rigged it up so that it would sort of dangle just below the surface and threw on a bathing suit, hopped in, took a series of shots, took a look at them and went, whoa, this is cool. All right. So now I need to step it up because a GoPro, the resolution's kind of small for still images. So I wanted to use my Sony. How do I do that? All right. So thankfully, my husband was kind of thinking outside of the box and he said, why don't you just get a fish tank and you can set it up sort of at the edge of the pool because we have like a little platform 
and I set the camera on delay start and then it has an interval setting so you can actually take a frame of your choice every five seconds or every 10 seconds and you can do 10 shots or you can do 20 shots you know so this is what I did and I would put it on delay hit the shutter and then rush to the other end of the pool get into position where I had already set my pre-focus and just start moving about and sort of (laughs) <laughs> attempting to be graceful. I'm not a, a synchronized swimmer. I'm not a ballerina. I <laughs> am definitely pretty awkward in front of the camera, as a matter of fact. So it took a lot of experimenting and realizing that I needed to be graceful with my hands and my feet if I didn't want to look like a terribly awkward. <laughs> so that was fun. Yeah. So I'm kind of talking a mile a minute. So we interrupt me. No, no, no. Be- That's very creative and very innovative. And which will lead me to my next question. Do you remember that moment when you found your particular style, when you said to yourself, this finally makes sense to me. I have my unique fingerprint in photography. Is there a moment like that for you? For me, I have had moments, but they change. Mm. So years ago, when I did that first body of work and had representation at galleries, I definitely... When I had created those images, I knew I had something and and I felt really passionate about it. And then there were long breaks, you know, then I would continue to experiment and delve into areas that I hadn't before trying to create a new body of work. So I think as a photographer, I couldn't imagine doing the same style for 20 years. I think like many artists, we get bored. (laughs) Like, okay, I've, I've achieved this and now I need to challenge myself and go in another direction so and I have done numerous series some of them were kind of mediocre some of them were appealing to a certain demographic and then some of them are kind of universal so the the series of the strangers on the street which was the collection that I sold through galleries those definitely had a universal appeal I think that probably helped in selling the work because I have sold many, which I'm just proud of and thrilled about. And now more recently, this body of work of the underwater series, I'm really passionate about. And I have to admit that if nobody was interested in them, nobody purchased any of them, I wouldn't care. I would just keep creating them because it just fills me with such satisfaction. Let me ask you this question. Because you have many valuable years as a photographer, and so this question really applies. In your opinion, what makes a exceptional photographer? And particularly, what are you looking for, Don, when you say, wow, that person's work is amazing? That's definitely a good question. Can I quantify that? So... You know, there are photographers out there that are very technical and they are experts in utilizing their camera, but they don't always evoke emotion with the work that they create. It may be technically sound, it may be beautifully exposed, but to me, when I look at it, it's like, okay, that's lovely, that's great. Sometimes not being technically perfect isn't such a bad thing it's really sort of creating work that that evokes emotion and maybe it comes from a place of passion from the creator Mm. whereas they're not trying to fill a requirement they're just creating something that they love are there any particular photographers that you're following that you can tell us that This is who I particularly enjoy looking at their work. So I have probably, like many people who are on Instagram, I follow 500 artists. (laughs) And uh, definitely some of them really stand out and it's inspiring. It it may not be something I ever have an interest in trying myself, but, but I love it. Although one of the first names that comes to mind is Barbara Cole. She is a photographer in Toronto, Canada, and she was the early inspiration for underwater photography. 
her work is just gorgeous. And it's not about everything being in sharp and in focus. It's not about the subject being fully in frame, but it just evokes so much emotion. So she was definitely a huge inspiration for this current project. It wasn't until recently that I had my own pool that I could actually execute on it. Awesome. Now, I know that there are several processes to photography, from scouting the location, art directing the model or the shoot, and post-editing. But what do you enjoy the most, Don? Mm, I think, like, post-photographers, the actual taking of the photo, absolutely. Yeah. I do enjoy editing, too, because it, it's endless what you can do and what you can create. Yeah, no, do I think about Working with people, I love working with people. They just can really brighten your day, sharing things collaboratively, whether it's the model themselves or the, the art director. So I suppose I, I do love all aspects of it, as long as I'm creating. The one thing that is definitely no fun for me, no fun at all, <laughs> is marketing. Okay, yeah, I can, I can I can see that part being the, the least amount of fun. But you said something earlier that was really interesting for me. And I think of, like, for instance, Picasso. There was this rose period, his blue period, his cubism. And there is these series of paintings that are like chapters in his life. And I'm sure you, if I'm assuming here, you've had a series of photos that can point back to different times of your life. Is there any particular series that you've done that you it's a fond memory in your life so i'm going to go with what comes to mind first thing and mm -hmm. that would be we lived in amsterdam the netherlands for about four months and all the images that i took during that time it was a very romantic period uh, so i was there my husband was working and my son and i joined him there because that's a long time to be separated so we kind of mingled uh, among the locals and lived the lifestyle and I was lucky enough to be a photographer and be able to create work while we were there so yeah that was a, a huge impact. Any advice for young photographers that want to get into this as a career or even just to express themselves as an artist. Any advice you want to give them for from somebody who has a wealth of knowledge in this space? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a that's a big one. So I can only sort of share based on my own experiences. I like to go back to a number of years ago when I had first created that body of artwork around the strangers on the street. I decided that I wanted to get participate in an art critic. So I was told by one of them, if I want to make pretty pictures, that's okay, but it's not art. Mm. <laughs> and I said, oh, <laughs> and then it was actually, you signed up for a panel. So there were four other critics that I sort of made my way along the table and received feedback from each of them. And then the second individual asked me what my thesis was surrounding the collection. All I could think was, I don't think I belong here. <laughs> so I was a little disenchanted at the time with the whole art world for a while. I didn't really understand it because my background education, it was more technical and creative photography. It was about graduating and getting a job, whether it was in portrait work or industrial or editorial, I didn't have any experience in the art world. So all of those feedback is not good for me. But see, now it didn't stop me. So going around about back to your question, I guess, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, if you want to be a portrait photographer, whether you, you have, if you have the luxury of going to school for something like that, wonderful. Take courses, teach yourself, and hopefully you can connect with some people that you admire who might be interested in mentoring you. 
but I think it helps to have some education. Like I said, whether it's, it's a night course, reading books and researching. Nowadays, you can go on YouTube and, and you can learn a ton. And then shoot, shoot, shoot. Just mm. keep creating. I think it takes years to really define your style, even though it changes over the years too. But I hope I answered that. It was kind of a roundabout No, way. no, no. I, absolutely, you did. And I have just a couple more questions here, Don. Yes. Has there been an experience in your past you would say shaped or influenced your photography that you do? Oh, I don't know if I have an answer to that. Maybe, but I can't actually think of an answer to that question. Well, it, it sounds as if if I'm from your story and it's been a great creative journey, you seem to, it's not one singular thing. It's the entire journey. It's from your experiences from one series to the other. And, and what I'm learning from you and from your answers is that you didn't let anybody get you out of your own passion for photography and your entire journey is one big experience that always evolves and changes and it keeps the excitement with your work because you don't know what's around the corner. Okay, I'm looking forward to what you do outside of this, your particular series you're doing now with the underwater pictures. Don, if you have people who are listening to this that want to purchase your work, and where is that at? Yes, I do. On my website, which is donharmer.com, all of my work, the work that I'm proudest of, is available for sale there, from fine art prints to images that are mounted on metal. Uh, there's another option for m- mounted on canvas. And then the last one is on acrylic surface which is uh, absolutely beautiful, but it's probably the most expensive process. So yeah, so I, I think there's there are things in everybody's price points and a variety of sizes. You know, if you're a collector and, and you enjoy smaller prints, then I've got something for you. Um, and then I have <laughs> <laughs> I have a variety too. So the collection of The Strangers on the Street. I've got some macro work, which I've really enjoyed creating during this pandemic and then of course as i'm creating i'm constantly updating my website too to include my underwater series fantastic and is there anything creatively you still want to achieve that you haven't done to this point that you're looking forward to do in the future i don't have a specific thing that i am looking to do but it's always an exploration whether i'm reading a novel or looking through magazines, I see work that inspires me. And it's not always in photography, it's painters, sculptures. They can influence the work that I want to create. And Don, lastly, please tell us how you personally define success. Success. (laughs) (laughs) This this one... I always ask it of everybody because, and it's always the constant, but it's always a little bit different from one artist to the other. So yeah, if you could, please tell us what's success in your world. I guess a single word that could sum it all up would be exploration. The world around me at large and seeing it and interpreting it in my own way is success. As I said before, ideally, it's nice if I'm able to sell my work and if other people find it appealing. But if they don't, I will still continue to create. And I guess as a photographer, I can keep them as digital files so they don't take up a lot of space. I think as a a painter, in order to keep creating, you you need to make room for your inventory. (laughs) So you do need to sell. And so if I never sold, it wouldn't matter to me. I would keep creating. So, yeah. So I I think I create because I need to. I do it because I love to. And it's part of who I am. So to me, that's success being able to do that. That's fantastic. And you, you wrapped it up perfectly because, like you said, you went to school. It was very technical. The technical skill of photography, but where I know you're an artist is that self-exploration of oneself. 
that's where I think that merging of the two worlds from technical side of photography and how you interpret the world and you, and you self-explore and you express it through your photography. I greatly appreciate you sharing your creative journey with us. And lastly, where can people connect with you again, Don? So on Instagram at Dawn, D-A-W-N, underscore Harmer, H-A-R-M-E-R, underscore P-W, as in photo works. And then you can also see my website, dawnharmer.com. And then, of course, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn, all under my name, again, Dawn Harmer. So that is it for where you can find me. <laughs> Fantastic. Listeners, make sure you connect with Dawn. And until next time, take care and bye. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you.